Jordan Peterson highlights the fear and anxiety that men feel when approaching women they are attracted to. The possibility of rejection is a real judgment, as Peterson puts it, and it can be paralyzing. He notes that this fear is more common among low-status men who are generally regarded as losers. However, he also points out that this fear is generally irrelevant because no one cares about these men one way or another. Peterson argues that women are the ones who select men, which makes them a part of nature. He emphasizes that this is not just a symbolic representation, but a real fact. This is why men feel such intense anxiety when approaching women they are attracted to, as they are being judged by nature itself. Peterson references a movie called Crumb, which he says provides a rare perspective on the world from the viewpoint of intelligent male losers. He notes that this is a perspective that is not often seen, as winners are usually the ones who tell their stories. Crumb is a great examination of the Oedipal complex and provides insight into the revenge fantasies of a loser who became a winner. Peterson's speech highlights the fundamental judgment that occurs when men approach women they are attracted to. The fear and anxiety that this can cause is a real issue for many men, particularly those who are low status and generally regarded as losers. However, Peterson argues that this fear is generally irrelevant, as women are the ones who select men, and this is a part of nature itself. The movie Crumb provides a rare perspective on this issue and is a great examination of the Oedipal complex. It cannot be overlooked that the role of women in society extends beyond mere symbolism sheds light on the profound significance of women as the gatekeepers of reproductive success. This is not a metaphorical representation, but rather the very essence of nature itself. Throughout history, symbolic representations of women have been established for various reasons. Peterson explains that these representations, including the notions of Mother Nature, the Queen, the Matrix, and the Matriarch, all stem from the same root word as matter and mother. They emphasize the idea of women as containers, cornucopias and sources of creation, the objects to be fertilized, the origin of all existence. These associations are deeply ingrained in the human psyche, connecting femininity to mystery, depth, emotional intricacy, and even death. While these associations do not necessarily define femininity, they hold great symbolic weight. For instance, a witch in a movie is never depicted gallivanting under the full bright sun at noon. Such an image would defy the established symbolic complex and confuse the audience. Dark settings, caves, valleys, and the ruler of the night, the moon, are all linked to femininity in the symbolic realm. Peterson points out that these associations convey a sense of intrigue and darkness, as exemplified, for instance, by Medusa's snaky hair. Indeed, one might question why a woman would be depicted with snakes sprouting from her head in relation to a man. The answer, according to Peterson, is surprisingly straightforward. The image of snakes embodies the treacherous and dangerous aspects of the underworld and hell, associations traditionally attributed to females. Perhaps the parallel between the mysterious, unpredictable nature of women and the lurking danger of Medusa's gaze is meant to caution men to approach women with caution and respect. The intricate network of symbolic associations surrounding femininity has deep historical roots. Peterson underscores the importance of understanding these symbols, not to perpetuate stereotypes or prejudices, but to appreciate the profound symbolic imagery humans have constructed around the concept of femininity. By recognizing the complexity and significance embedded in these symbols, we can develop a more nuanced understanding and foster healthier and more respectful relationships between men and women. Drawing upon Darwinian principles, Peterson elucidates that survival and reproduction are key components of the natural world. While survival pertains to an individual's existence, reproduction signifies the survival of their genes. Consequently, Peterson posits that the concept of natural selection, governed by nature, plays a pivotal role in shaping the behavior of living beings. Jordan Peterson emphasizes the discerning nature of women when it comes to selecting their partners. This selectivity, he asserts, is of paramount significance. Women, he contends, have a propensity to evaluate men based on their fitness, 
which plays a pivotal role in the mating process. Furthermore, Jordan Peterson addresses the discrepancy in sexual and reproductive experiences between men and women. He notes that many men find themselves devoid of sexual partners and offspring, a situation not mirrored among women. Most women, he points out, become mothers at some point in their lives, and it is exceedingly uncommon for a woman to struggle to find a sexual partner. The discourse then shifts towards the realm of personal agency and control over one's actions and behaviors. Jordan Peterson explores the idea of individuals being influenced or even possessed by various thoughts and emotions. He postulates that some individuals may have experienced the grip of irrational or compulsive ideas in their lives. These ideas can range from irrational attractions to uncontrollable eating habits or difficulties in managing interpersonal interactions due to personality traits such as excessive agreeableness or impulsivity. Jordan Peterson underscores the significance of recognizing these mental complexes as sub-personalities. By doing so, individuals gain a deeper understanding of the nature of these internal forces that can guide their actions and perceptions. He uses the example of anger to illustrate his point, highlighting how anger can be triggered by perceived provocations, even if the intention behind the provocation is unclear or subjective. In essence, Jordan Peterson encourages introspection and self-awareness as tools for comprehending the intricate interplay between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. By recognizing and understanding these sub-personalities, individuals can gain greater control over their responses and navigate the complexities of human relationships more effectively. In contemplating the nature of irritation within human interactions, one might find it akin to perceiving an individual as irksome. Sometimes, it's the subtle nuances, perhaps in the way they hold their mouth or some other inexplicable detail that triggers this response. You may find yourself caught in a delicate balance, teetering between the belief that it's not your fault, but theirs, that they are indeed the source of irritation. This enigmatic dance unfolds within the nebulous realm that lies somewhere between the subjective and the objective, a terrain that fuels many a heated debate over a lifetime. Such disputes often revolve around the age-old question, is it your irritating disposition or my hypersensitivity that's at fault? It's a conundrum that can unravel over extended periods, as both parties grapple to discern the truth. The crux of the matter, however, is this. When you're enveloped by a particular emotional state, motivation, or a complex idea, the world assumes the hues of your perspective. Facts, in their objective form, suddenly take on new dimensions as they filter through the lens of your unique worldview. This concept is disconcerting, for it shatters the illusion of our self-proclaimed mastery over our lives. Self-deception becomes evident when, after solemnly promising to visit the gym thrice weekly and abstain from alcohol, you end up sharing drinks with a person you had resolved to avoid. You're left bewildered, questioning your own consistency and self-control. It's as if you're not the person who faithfully follows through on their intentions, and the answer to the enigma of your identity delves into the realm of psychoanalysis. This journey into self-discovery reveals that you're a multifaceted being, a complex entity with ancient, deeply ingrained facets. The idealized image of your naive, youthful self is but a minuscule fragment floating in an ocean of intricacy, where the ocean itself represents your totality. Embarking on this introspective voyage means delving into the profound mysteries of humanity. In doing so, you come to realize that, whatever it means to be human, it is undeniably peculiar and defies easy categorization.